This is Science Module 2, Lesson 3. This is the first part for this lesson uh, called Water. Now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to recognize that water can exist in three states. You should be able to compare the water in the three states, understand how water changes from one state to another, understand the effects of heat gain or heat loss on any state of water, understand what is melting point and boiling point, and lastly, you will, be able, you will know the factors which affect the rate of evaporation. Now starting off, the three states of water. Now matter exists in three states and so does water. We have solids in the form of ice for water, yeah, liquid in the form of water as we know and gas in the form of steam and water vapor. Now let's look at the changing states of water. Water can change in state, for example from solid to liquid to gas. And this happens when there is a gain or loss of heat. From solid to liquid, we need to heat it up. From liquid to gas, we need to heat it up too. From gas to liquid, we need to cool the gas. And from liquid to become ice or solid, we need to cool it again. Now let's look at the first process which is freezing. When freezing happens, water which is in liquid form gets converted to ice which is in solid form. The liquid loses heat and so the water is cooled. The, when the water loses heat, the temperature decreases slowly to 0 degrees Celsius. Now, the, water, the melting point and the, or the freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and so the water changes in state from liquid to solid. Alright? Now let's look at condensation. When this happens, the gas becomes liquid. The gas loses heat and as such, the gas is cooled. The water vapor will change in state now to become water. Now let me ask you a question. I believe you have seen this situation before where you have a cold cup of water. Right? And these are your ice blocks. On a very, in a very hot day, this is the sun if my drawing that is not good enough. And somehow you will see that there are water droplets on the outside of the cup. Now why this happens is that in the air there is lots of water vapor. When this water vapor comes down and gets into contact with this very cold cup, what happens is that the water vapor molecules or the particles, they will condense, they will lose heat and they will condense to become the liquid and uh, become the water droplets. So condensation happens every day even when you're drinking cold water. Moving on, let's look at boiling. When boiling happens, liquid gets converted to gas. Now the liquid gains heat and that means the water is heated up. The temperature increases slowly to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. And the water changes in state from liquid to gas. Now, melting. When this happens, solid gets converted to liquid. The solid gains heat and the solid is heated up. The temperature increases slowly to 0 degrees Celsius, which is the melting point of ice. And this results in a change in state of the ice as it becomes water. And our last process that we need to know is evaporation. Evaporation is a process where liquid gets converted to become gas. And this is how uh, we dry our wet clothes. Now, the surface of the wet clothes gain heat 
and, and when that happens, the water turns into gas, which is water vapor. The water vapor escapes into the air and this can happen at any temperature. Again, this is how the road uh, dries up after a wet day. This is how our clothes dry after we wash them. Most of the processes on earth where water kind of disappears happens because of evaporation. Now the rate of evaporation refers to how quickly water evaporates. There are three main factors which affect the rate of evaporation and they are temperature, wind and surface area. Now let's look at temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the rate of evaporation. That means the evaporation it happens faster. This makes sense, doesn't it? Would you rather dry your clothes when in the day or at night? In the day when the sun is out and it's hotter or at night when the sun is down and it's colder? Obviously in the day. Why? Because it's hotter, right? And the rate of evaporation is faster. Wind. Stronger wind gives rise to faster evaporation. When we mop our floor, what happens? Do we switch on the fan or do we switch it off? Right? Very obviously, we switch it on because there's a stronger wind and the water evaporates faster. And lastly, ex area of exposed surface area. Now, larger surface area like what you see here will result in faster evaporation as compared to this container. Okay, this is something you should know. And that is it. Our part one is complete. If you do not understand any part of the video, please go back and re-watch it. I'm sure you will be able to understand it. Thank you. Bye-bye.